Hi, I'm Dr. Jeree Ducombs with North Oaks Cardiology Clinic in Hammond. And I'm Dr. James Parker, also with North Oaks Cardiology uh, in Hammond. And we'd like to talk to you today a little bit about blood pressure, high blood pressure specifically. Uh, recently, the American Heart Association, as well as the American College of Cardiology, have revised their guidelines as to what we consider to be high blood pressure and also the way in which we treat high blood pressure. As per these new guidelines, nearly half of all Americans actually now have high blood pressure, will be considered high blood pressure. We want to bring awareness to these new guidelines as well as to the patients who were perhaps previously not considered to have high blood pressure and uh, talk a little bit more about the importance of controlling blood pressure and the risks associated with having high blood pressure. North Oaks Health System and the American Heart Association have recently embarked on a three-year partnership to improve the health of our community using the American Heart Association Check Change Control Program. This is an online tool which will help improve awareness and hopefully control of blood pressure in order to reduce the risks of cardiovascular disease and mortality in our patient population. High blood pressure oftentimes is something that's been overlooked in the past. In fact, it's even been called the silent killer. High blood pressure is important if you have other disease issues such as diabetes or have had a previous stroke or heart disease. Diabetes, if, pardon me, high blood pressure actually affects the kidneys, it can affect the heart, it affects the brain, it affects pretty much everything in your body. The best way to protect yourself is by knowing your blood pressure and managing your risks. Those risks can include things like um, high blood pressure, tobacco use, sodium intake, sleep, um, all of those things will affect your, your blood pressure. So it's important to know your numbers. Many patients with high blood pressure don't even know they have it, which is why we've embarked upon this partnership to improve the awareness in our community of what those numbers are and what they mean. At this time, we're ready to take questions if anyone has questions to type in. So I'll just get started. Um, one of the questions that we've been seeing lately are, is what are the new guidelines? The new guidelines say that a blood pressure of less than 120 over 80 is normal. If your blood pressure is above 120 but less than 130 and still in the 80, below 80 range, then we consider that elevated. Stage 1 hypertension is a range of 130 to 139 systolic over um, 80 to 89 diastolic. Stage 2 hypertension is anything over that. Most patients will, who fall into hypertension in this new category will have stage, stage 1 hypertension. Most of that can be managed with um, dietary modification, exercise, regular sleep. If your blood pressure is higher than that, you may need to see your doctor to talk about medication changes. We have a question. How is my blood pressure checked? So it's a very good question. Blood pressure is typically checked as, as if you go to the doctor's office, you know, they put a blood pressure cuff on your arm and they inflate the cuff. They listen for heart sounds. Essentially what they're looking for is the sound at which the, uh, rather the, the pressure at which the sound starts initially. And we listen to it until it stops. And that gives you your systolic, which is that first number, and the diastolic, which is that second number, in order to actually get that blood pressure reading. What I tell a lot of folks too, one of the important things with respect to blood pressure is that we're looking mostly at resting blood pressure. So when it comes time to check your blood pressure at home, either with an electronic cuff or even a manual cuff if you have one, one of the important things is to make sure you're resting. Make sure you're not in the middle of doing a lot of activities which will essentially elevate your blood pressure. It doesn't mean you have high blood pressure all the time. Sit down and rest for about five minutes before you check it and then check it at that point. And don't be terribly alarmed if it's a bit elevated at first. Perhaps you need to wait a little longer and recheck it. It's when it's consistently elevated is when we kind of start to think we need to do something about it and at rest. It's also important to have both feet on the floor and have your arm supported on a table or the chair, um, the arm of the chair so that your arm or your blood pressure cuff is resting at about heart height. Um, some of my patients have told me that they check their blood pressure when, before they get out of bed in the morning when they're laying flat. And this isn't really the number that we want to look at. We want that, you know, sitting in a seated position, both feet on the floor, having rested for five to ten minutes. 
And also that's important too that Dr. Decombs mentions is about checking it first thing in the morning. If you're already on blood pressure medications, you may find it a little bit alarming when you check your blood pressure before you take your medicines in the morning. At that time we kind of expect it almost to be a little bit high because you're on medicines to lower them. That, uh, that can be very alarming and sometimes that can even be a little bit, uh, make patients rather anxious, which then can actually raise your blood pressure even further. It kind of starts a bad cycle at that point. I usually tell folks a lot of times, wait until after you've taken your medicines in the morning, unless you're instructed by your doctor to check it beforehand. If you're tailoring some of the medicines, wondering if we need to cut back on medicines, your doctor may actually have you check it at first thing in the morning. But normally, you kind of do expect it to be a little higher in the morning if you have not yet taken your medicines. If I have high blood pressure, what is the first thing I should do? Well, um, I like to tell my patients to um, to keep a track, keep a log of their blood pressure. So, if you're recording your blood pressure, definitely write it down and bring it to your doctor when you come in. Um, the lifestyle modification is very, very important. So you wanna reduce your sodium intake to 1500 milligrams per day or less. This is hard to do, especially if you are eating in restaurants or fast food chains. Um, if you're not preparing your own food, very difficult to do. Very important to read the labels of the foods that you're eating and pay attention to how many servings are in the package that you're eating. Um, limit your alcohol intake. Uh, one drink or less per day for women, two drinks or less per day for men. You can't save those up and have them all on Friday <laughs> or Saturday as the case may be or Sunday for the game. If only. If only. So um, you can't save those up. Uh, limit your sodium intake, limit your alcohol intake, limit your caffeine intake. If it's uh, say more than 300 milligrams per day, that's, that's excessive, that's too much. Uh, make sure you get regular exercise. We're shooting for about 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. This is also very important to bring your blood pressure down. You might notice that immediately after exercise, your blood pressure is higher than it is at rest. That is normal. Um, but that's, remember, that's not the blood pressure that we're really looking for unless you don't feel well. So uh, for most purposes, you're gonna be checking it at rest, but 30 to 60 uh, minutes of exercise per day is, is ideal for a total of 150 minutes per week. And of course, if you have medication, make sure you're taking it. And if you can't take it for some reason, either for cost or side effects, please be sure to let your doctor know right away. And also just in this current time of uh, a lot of flu and, and uh, upper respiratory issues as well too, being sick can raise your blood pressure. It's a stressor on your body. It's not unexpected if you're ever having illness or acute problems like that to have your blood pressure a bit elevated. We don't necessarily change your medicines because of that. It is something simply to be aware of and monitor your blood pressure like Dr. Decombs mentions too. But again, having illness may raise your blood pressure already. It's not something we're gonna change your medicines for. Especially in those patients with flu who are taking NSAIDs, NSAIDs can raise your blood pressure as well, and decongestants in the common cough and cold, right. and even the over-counter medications can raise your blood pressure. So if you notice that your blood pressure is elevated while you're taking these, you might wanna back off and take Tylenol instead of the NSAIDs and avoid the decongestants. Can you explain systolic and diastolic? Sure. So systolic and diastolic uh, are basically the two terms we describe uh, with respect to how the heart works. The heart, if you think about it, is a pump. It squeezes, which allows the blood to go out to the body, and then it also relaxes in order to fill. Those two different pressures are what the systolic and diastolic pressures are referred to. The systolic, which is that top number, is when your heart actually squeezes. It's the active part of the blood pressure itself. The diastolic is what the resting pressure is within your arteries themselves when your heart is filling. That's the lower number. They're both very important. Uh, there are a lot of different things that can actually make either or both of those numbers go up. Uh, and that's where we also tailor some of the medications to target those specifically. Uh, but that is the, the top and the bottom number. It just refers pretty much to the heart cycle itself. Yeah. One question that I often get asked in clinic, Jim, I don't know if you get asked this, is um, which one is more important? Is mm -hmm. it the top number or the bottom number? And I don't really um, have a good answer for that. I think that they're both very right. important. Certainly, um, the risk of end organ damage increases as that top number goes up, maybe a little bit more so than the bottom number, but they are both very, very important. So, I don't Absolutely. Know. 
Also, too, we've, we've seen in the past the idea of hardening arteries in, in the older population, older patients as well. And that can in itself cause the lower number to raise a little bit chronically, not to the point where it should be extremely abnormal. Uh, but again, that number can be influenced even partly by aging itself. How often should I check my blood pressure and is once daily enough? I would think that would depend on what your blood pressure is to start with. So for um, a patient, a young patient without any symptoms or who has no history of high blood pressure, once every year or two should be fine. Right. If you notice that your blood pressure is elevated, you'll definitely want to start checking it more often. One elevated blood pressure reading does not mean that you have hypertension. Um, that'll need to be checked again at a later date in a different setting. Um, and even most of the time when we see our patients in the clinic, if they're on medications to control blood pressure and they're reasonably controlled, I would say probably checking it once, once a day at the most is probably plenty. You may not even necessarily need to do it each day. That's going to really be, be tailored by your doctor. Um, if you're also in the middle of trying to find the right regimen of your blood pressure, we'll probably have you check it a bit more often. Uh, but again, routinely, do you need to check your blood pressure multiple times a day if you're not having problems? No, you really probably don't. At what blood pressure reading should a patient seek medical attention? And when should they see their cardiologist versus going to seek care at the emergency department? Well, it's a good question. Um, obviously, some of the, the major cutoff areas for blood pressure is if the pressure starts to get, the top number starts to certainly get above 160 is one where we get a little bit alarmed. Not necessarily emergency room alarmed, but probably want to get, at least give your doctor a call uh, or start to get in to see them. And if the bottom number is over 90, that's, that's the area where we really get a little bit concerned. If your blood pressure, the top number is getting anywhere in the 180s to 190s, even 200s, that's time for the emergency room. That's when you really need to seek medical help immediately because you're falling into the range where heart attack, stroke, damage to the blood vessels are all an absolute possibility. Uh, you definitely want to seek treatment immediately for that. And I think it's also important to know what your blood pressure has been chronically. Mm -hmm. Some patients are difficult to control and they'll have a blood pressure of 160 and we're working to, to change their medications and get that down. But if your blood pressure is normally 120 and you're suddenly 160 or 180 and you have symptoms like blurred vision, headache, um, ringing in your ears, chest, chest pain, pain, shortness of breath, new onset, swelling of the legs, those are definite warning signs. And I think you should seek um, emergency attention immediately for those. Absolutely. Why is it important to know my blood pressure levels? I'm drinking, please. <laughs> um, well, you know, hypertension is, uh, has often been called the silent killer because um, many patients do not have symptoms while the damage is ongoing, and that can happen over weeks, months, years. Um, hypertension is one of the leading causes of stroke, heart attack, heart failure, heart rhythm problems. It can lead to blindness, it can lead to kidney disease, even disease, even end-stage renal disease causing a patient to need chronic dialysis for the rest of their lives. Um, contributes to peripheral vascular disease as well. So there are so many things that high blood pressure can do to you and you're not even aware that it's happening. And it happens gradually, usually happens gradually, and it can usually. be prevented. That's a lot of misery um, and quite honestly expense in uh, healthcare that can be prevented. Very simple monitoring, absolutely. It is very important. Should a patient be seen for normally low blood pressure? One well, of that actually sort of depends upon how you feel. Uh, some people actually have a low blood pressure by the, the guidelines, and, and some people ask me, well, what is low blood pressure? You know, what would define low blood pressure? I guess it probably depends on how you feel. Some people who have a systolic or top number around 100 may feel weak and dizzy. That may be very low for them. Some people may have a top number that's in the 90s, and they feel absolutely fine. Uh, it's really variable and it depends upon how you feel. We get very, very alarmed by patients whose top number is certainly less than 60. That is, that should never happen, honestly. That's, that's certainly a big problem. Uh, or even the lower number less than 40, uh, if we see that. Those are definitely entirely too low. But it varies a little bit, really based on how you feel. 
to go back just for just a second um, because I don't think we completely answered one of the previous questions, which was, should I see my primary care practitioner or mm -hmm. should I see a cardiologist for high blood pressure? Most primary care physicians, um, providers, whether it's a, a physician or a nurse practitioner, um, should be very well able to manage high blood pressure. If you have um, end organ damage, like we talked about, uh, problems with the eyes, problems with uh, history of stroke, heart attack, heart failure, that sort of thing, you would definitely want to see um, a cardiologist. If you have associated kidney disease, you'll want to see a nephrologist. So I would say for um, most uncomplicated high blood pressure, uh, it's perfectly fine to see your primary care practitioner. They should be very well educated to take care of that. Absolutely. If I have diabetes, is it safe to have a glass of wine a day for heart health? Drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology have acknowledged the fact that alcohol use in moderation can um, be beneficial for the heart. I think um, what gets lost in translation or what doesn't often get reported along with that is the fact that they never recommend that you start drinking just for that benefit. Um, and remember, it's very, very important to limit that to one drink per day for uh, women and two or less for men. Um, I, I would say that it was probably fine to have a drink occasionally, but remember that alcohol can have a lot of sugar in it as well. Right. So it'll probably raise your blood sugar levels, which is another risk factor for heart disease. I'd also like to mention too, what do we mean by one drink? Because obviously one drink is uh, not the size of the bottle. Uh, what they actually define as one drink is when you look at beer, it's 12 ounces, counts as one drink. Wine is eight ounces and it's five ounces of hard liquor is considered to be the equivalent of what the American Heart Association defines as one drink. So that's maybe not as much as you would consider to have one drink, but that's where the guidelines actually are. What causes high blood pressure? Well, there are a lot of factors that actually cause high blood pressure. Uh, one can simply just be your genetics. It may run in your family. This is just how your arteries and, and your plumbing essentially works. Um, kidney disease itself can also have a major influence on high blood pressure because the kidneys themselves release a lot of chemicals into your body that raise or lower your blood pressure. And uh, so simply kid kidney disease itself can affect that too. Um, we see obviously diabetes affects the kidneys, which in turn can have effects on your blood pressure. Um, your diet, of course, high salt diet, high caffeine diet, uh, stress, anxiety also cause a lot of elevated blood pressure. Sleep deprivation, deprivation also is another thing too. Folks with bad sleep apnea who do not sleep well will find themselves with very high blood pressure in addition to being fatigued all the time, which is a major risk factor for heart disease. The secondary causes of high blood pressure are pretty rare. Those are things like um, endocrine, neuroendocrine secreting tumors, um, thyroid problems. These things are pretty rare. If you have the onset of high blood pressure at an age less than 30 or sudden worsening or um, labile blood pressure or other symptoms with your blood pressure, you might want to see your primary care provider or your cardiologist to look for secondary causes of hypertension, although they're pretty rare. Well, I think this, uh, this about does it for us. Uh, so we'd like to wrap up. Uh, I'm Dr. Parker for Dr. Duke Holmes. If you're concerned that you have high blood pressure, if you feel that you need to uh, see a doctor, one again, we definitely recommend you to see your primary doctor initially, but we are also certainly available uh, through the cardiology clinic. Uh, you can make an appointment, uh, call us at 985-230-2778. Uh, in Tangipahoa Parish, or 1-844-277-8669 in Livingston Parish. Uh, and we'll be glad to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you.